Hello, Mario! In this video, I'm going to take a look at a question about an albatross flying against the wind. So let's get the question up and running first. Here that is. And I'll just put my little calculator up there in readiness. So here we are. Here's the question. An albatross heads due south. And we're going to use vectors to solve this at a speed of 27 kilometres per hour. A wind of 23 kilometres per hour blows from the northeast. What is the bird's true speed relative to the ocean and the bearing of its direction of travel? So one of the things that we're able to do in these types of diagrams is to represent the air speed with a vector. And this vector here, AB, represents the airspeed of 27 kilometres per hour heading due south. So we can see it starts at A and goes to B. Now the wind blowing from the northeast, which is across here at an angle of 45 degrees northeast, at 23 kilometres per hour, is, blow, is represented by the vector BC and the 23 here. So when we draw in the resultant vector, which goes from the start to the finish here, that length of that vector will give us the airspeed of the albatross air relative to the ocean, as well as its direction. Now I've actually drawn this diagram here to scale uh, using AutoCAD and using the dimensioning tools to actually get the answers out. And then I'm going to show how, those, how we get those answers using, using mathematics. The thing is that it's, near, it's always a good idea to draw the diagram as best as you possibly can to equal the real situation. That way you can test such things as the bearings and distances to make sure that the answer you get is, is real or sane. So in the first instance we've got our 27 down here which is due south and then the 23 across here. Now the way that we solve these things is to work out the various components in both the north-south direction and the east-west direction. And in terms of the 27 going due south, uh, that's quite simple because that's 27 going down there. However, we need to work out the north-south component and the east-west component of the 23 degrees. And we can see that it creates a small triangle here, um, CB, and coming down to the right angle here. So in the small triangle, we can see that this, the north the, north, the northern component or the north-south component would be this distance here, 16.263, which is 23 sine 45. So if we look at sine 45, we're trying to work out the opposite using Sokatoa, using that would be the opposite that we're trying to find. So um, sine 45, um, 23 sine 45. Uh, typically in these vector type situations, we are only ever using sine and cosine. Uh, we typically know the hypotenuse um, in this case here for working out the components. And so we want to work out either the opposite and the adjacent. So looking at this triangle here, um, we can see that that's 23 sine 45. And also the adjacent or the east-west component is 23 cos 45 and as we know the 45 degree angle is a is a one one sort of gradient so the um, the two components will be equal and they're 16.263 so now we can see that going we can work out the components of the resultant vector which is typically shown with the two arrows here and Looking at this big triangle here, this is the AC and out to the little right angle. Looking at the big triangle there, um, 
that will enable us to work out the speed and we can see that we have got 16.263 east west and 27 plus 16.263 which is 43.263 north south so looking at that big the big triangle we can now work out the resultant which is uh, just using pythagoras 16.263 and 43 0.2363 squared. But, but just before we do that, I should um, actually work out these here. So um, that's going to be uh, just using the calculator. I just realized I had it there and I should perhaps be using it. 23 times sine 45 equals, um, and then we should push that there, 16.263. So that's working out there. And again, 45 cosine, oh, clear, all clear, uh, 23 times cosine 45 equals, and uh, this will give it to us in decimals, 16.263. And then that brings us to working out the distance here which is uh, 16.263x squared plus 43.263x squared equals, and then we want to take the square root of that, so square root of the answer equals and that's 46.219 and 46.22, just uh, two, two decimal places. And just note that that is uh, kilometres per hour because we're dealing in speeds. We're using the vectors to represent speeds. Now, now we want to work out the bearing of this. And remember that bearings are measured clockwise from north. So we want to actually get this angle here. But first we need to work out angle theta and then we would add 180 to get the correct bearing. So angle theta is equal to tan to the negative 1, so shift tan to the negative 1, 16.263, uh, divided by 42, oh, 40, 43.26. Three equals, and that gives us our our, our bearing uh, in degrees and decimals. Push our little button here, and we get twenty degrees thirty six oh six, and so the bearing will be one eighty plus that. So we could just go plus one eighty equals, and um, again. 236.063 so then I've written that down the bottom there so the the albatross is flying at a speed of 46 point sorry 46.22 kilometers per hour at a bearing of 200 degrees, 36 minutes and 6 seconds. So there you go. It's relatively simple if you break it down into components, work out its components and then put it together to work out the resultant vector. Cheers, Mario. See you.